Hello, this is Dr. Alex Vasquez. What I'd like to do in this presentation is explore the hypothesis that the central sensitization or central amplification of pain in fibromyalgia could simply be a bunch of uh, corporate rationalization advocating pharmaceuticals. So for those of you who aren't familiar with fibromyalgia, it's a relatively common uh, pain syndrome where patients are often described as having this widespread pain along with some other uh, somatic symptoms like fatigue, uh, difficulty concentrating, unrestful sleep. A lot of times they have gas and bloating and some other gastrointestinal disturbances. And they can have a, a pretty wide range of problems based on the very broad 2010 diagnostic criteria uh, by which probably half the population could be diagnosed with fibromyalgia. So I've discussed that controversy in another video, but what I'd like to focus on in this video is the concept that central sensitization either is or is not uh, the underlying problem in fibromyalgia. So I'd like to look at some controversies and uh, uh, discuss those with you real quickly. So as you can tell on this slide, again, we're addressing the uh, central issue of central sensitization in this case, no pun intended. Uh, it's, also called, it's also called central amplification of pain uh, in fibromyalgia. Central sensitization or central amplification is a very real neurophysiologic phenomenon whereby the central nervous system develops a low threshold for pain perception, resulting in the sense of pain from stimuli that should not be painful. We call this allodynia or allodynia. Many causes for this are known, and rarely, some cases might develop without known cause. Um, these statements are generally accepted as fact, and I think that these are mostly agreeable. Where the controversy is, though, however, is that many doctors believe or have been led to believe that the pain of fibromyalgia is due to primary central sensitization and that the condition needs to be treated indefinitely with pain-relieving drugs. That's what we're going to focus on in this presentation. The idea that fibromyalgia is primarily caused by a nervous system abnormality called uh, central sensitization or central amplification. My position and my hypothesis um, is that primary central sensitization or amplification as the cause of pain in fibromyalgia is scientifically untenable. I think that this uh, concept is illogical based on research that's already been published. Furthermore, I think it's medically irresponsible. Uh, I think it results in the medical profession's failure to treat an otherwise treatable condition. And I think it's ethically harmful. Uh, it fails to maintain the physician's ethical responsibilities, to maintain patient autonomy, to provide uh, beneficence, and to withhold uh, non-malfeasance, such as making patients dependent on medications that they perhaps really don't need. So we'll discuss that and other components, uh, other segments of this presentation. Due to the length restrictions imposed by YouTube, I believe I can only make this video um, as long as 10 or perhaps 15 minutes. So we're going to have to break this discussion up into a few different videos. This will be installment number one. So again, we're going to address this controversy that many doctors believe or have been led to believe that the pain of fibromyalgia is due to primary central sensitization and that the condition needs to be treated indefinitely with pain relieving drugs. Well, is it true? Is, is this true that doctors actually believe this? Absolutely, it's true. Uh, if we were to quote and uh, observe this video, which is also available on YouTube, we could see that we have a pain specialist here who is actually chairman of the Department of Pain Medicine and Palliative Care and was actually the past president of the American Pain Society. In his video, he states, the problem fundamentally in fibromyalgia is that the ability of the body to sense noxious stimuli has been distorted. He states that this could be due to perhaps unknown causes. Maybe it was a viral syndrome, maybe there was trauma, or it could have just happened, quote, out of the blue without any precipitating event. Uh, again, uh, I think that in fibromyalgia, we have definite causes for the pain that these patients experience, and I think that the causes of that pain can be uh, treated directly. So I must disagree uh, that uh, the pain in patients with fibromyalgia is due to primary central sensitization. I realize that that's what doctors are often taught. I think that that's very unfortunate because what that requires is the overlooking of some very uh, scientifically valid research in order to come to the conclusion that the pain of fibromyalgia is due to uh, a, a primary nervous system uh, defect. So let's look at another article. We could also say in a way that 
central sensitization in fibromyalgia is kind of like a rumor that just got started. Uh, and once it uh, got published enough times, then doctors kind of believe that it was true, and then it keeps getting published and published again. Now, does central sensitization occur in fibromyalgia? Probably so, and I think it does happen, and there's good research to suggest and support that it is a real phenomenon in patients with fibromyalgia. However, the issue that I'm debating is, is it the primary cause of the condition? In my opinion, the answer is no. Let's look at this article published uh, by the American Academy of Family Physicians in their journal, American Family Physician, in 2007. Fibromyalgia is an idiopathic, chronic, non-articular pain syndrome uh, with generalized tender points. Well, what the word idiopathic means is that we don't know the cause of it. And as you can see toward the bottom of their uh, introductory paragraph here, their abstract, what they recommend is a multidimensional approach with patient education, which basically means telling the patient that they have to live with it and they're not going to die from it, cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, low-grade e uh, aerobic exercise, physical therapy, and pharmacologic therapy. So when we don't have the answer, the answer must lie in the use of drugs. So I am, again, against uh, describing fibromyalgia as idiopathic. I think the cause is well delineated in the research. I think that we can form a very consistent model of this condition and that we can treat it directly, uh, which I've discussed in my books uh, and as I'll discuss in other uh, YouTube and other video presentations. So why do doctors believe this? It's because that's what they're told. Uh, and they're told this by published research in some pretty popular journals like American Family Physician. I think it's a good journal. I read it myself. Uh, however, I think that their information is generally accurate. I think that within the medical profession, uh, some widespread opinions about fibromyalgia are incorrect. And what I'm addressing here uh, certainly isn't the quality of this journal, which I, again, usually like. But what I'm addressing here is the issue of primary central sensitization as being the cause of fibromyalgia. I do not believe that that's the case. Let's look at some more research. So here's another article. This was published in Mayo Clinic Proceedings uh, in late uh, 2011. So I'm uh, creating this video in February of uh, 2012. So this is a very recent article. This was published just a few months ago. Again. Mayo Clinic Proceedings, a very well-respected journal. This is called The Science of Fibromyalgia. Well, let's look at the abstract and see if we might point out a few mistakes here. Uh, our understanding of fibromyalgia has increased substantially in recent years with extensive, uh, with extensive research suggesting a neurogenic origin for the most prominent symptom of fibromyalgia, which, of course, is widespread pain. Now, if we just look at the linguistics involved in that sentence, it's, it makes sense because we're talking about a neurogenic origin and we're talking about pain, well, pain is simply, you know, stimuli perceived by the nervous system. So, yeah, it makes sense that a painful condition could be caused by some problem with the nerves. Sure, that makes sense. Uh, but it's not really accurate. Uh, when we say neurogenic origin, what we would be suggesting in that case is that the problem originates in the nerves. Neurogenic origin means the problem originates in the nerves. That is not correct when we're talking about fibromyalgia. They go on to say uh, clinicians could more effectively uh, diagnose and manage fibromyalgia if they better understood its underlying mechanism. I believe that that's true, but they would have to be, clinicians would have to be presented accurate data, uh, not distorted data in my opinion, uh, and that's the only way that they would actually come to a better, uh, more accurate diagnosis and certainly more effective treatment. Um, they go on to state that fibromyalgia is a disorder of pain processing, period. Um, I find that not only wrong, but I find that to be painfully wrong. Um, fibromyalgia is a disorder of pain processing. No, it's a disorder of pain perception. Um, and yes, there are processing uh, abnormalities associated with that over time, but that is not the primary problem. If doctors are going to treat this condition effectively, they have to address the underlying problem. Again, I happen to have reviewed this in my books, and we'll talk about it more in some other presentations. Uh, they go on to support the use of pharmacological treatments. Well, this is a major conflict of interest for the authors uh, because they're all funded by drug companies, as we will see uh, and as was discussed in the first page of the article. So let's look at that. So one of the things that concern me about this article is that if we look at the affiliations, which are disclosed on the first page of the article, 
if we look at the affiliations of each of the authors, they're, all of them, all three of them, have been paid by uh, drug companies, um, usually several times over, um, mostly Pfizer and Eli Lilly. Now, Pfizer and Eli Lilly happen to be drug companies that have uh, marketed to the, the two uh, and only two uh, FDA-approved uh, medications for the treatment of fibromyalgia. And then, you know, here they are kind of funding this uh, research publication that goes out to doctors who are then responsible for treating patients. Uh, furthermore, as you can see at the top of this excerpt, they say the Fibro Collaborative is a diverse group of leading experts. Well, if we were to just read the paragraph without reading the details below it, gosh, that sounds like a pretty great group. It's a, they're a collaborative. It's kind of almost sounds socialist. Maybe they're a collective too, but they're, anyway, they're a collaborative uh, and they're a diverse group. So there's diversity in this group and they are leading. They're not just experts, they're leading experts. So wow, what a great group. Uh, and if we look at the bottom of the page, we see that the Fibro Collaborative Group is actually sponsored by a drug company, uh, Pfizer, who makes one of the FDA-approved medications. So when I'm reading this article and I'm trying to learn more about fibromyalgia, being the good doctor that I am, some red flags and yellow flags start popping up all over the place when I find out that the three authors and the group behind the publication of this paper are all sponsored by drug companies. Um, so it's no surprise then that the consensus of this article uh, would support the use of medications and certainly um, not entertain any uh, alternative or so-called complementary um, integrative treatments. So uh, I'm not so sure that this article is really in the best interest of doctors who have to treat patients and the patients who are actually coming to doctors seeking care. Uh, there's obviously some conflict of interest going on here that uh, is is disclosed, admittedly, but it's kind of disclosed here in the fine print, and most busy doctors probably don't have time to read that. So uh, the FDA has approved two drugs for the treatment of a fibromyalgia. One's called Lyrica or Pregabalin. This is uh, produced by a company called Pfizer. And the other is Cymbalta, which is an uh, antidepressant type medication. It's used for a couple different conditions, as you can see from their own uh, information. It's used for depression, generalized anxiety disorder, nerve pain. It's also used for other pain syndromes, including uh, fibromyalgia. Well, they are the uh, funders of the research that gets presented as objective research, and then uh, medical doctors and family physicians all over the country and all over the world consume that information. And then when their patients come in and they have widespread pain, then of course, first thing doctors think of is, wow, this is a disorder of central sensitization. It can only be treated by medications. So here's your prescription, uh, and we'll probably end up trying combination treatment. So we have to end up, you know, usually prescribing, you know, several medications. Um, so again, I think that there's a very significant conflict of interest there uh, when the drug companies are actually funding the researchers who then go on to publish research uh, consumed by the medical profession and then distributed to patients indirectly in the, force, uh, in the, in the form of uh, patient advice. One more interesting note about this article, again published in Mayo Clinic Proceedings in late uh, 2011, is at the back of the article they say editorial support was provided by uh, this certain uh, individual professional and was actually funded by the drug companies. So even their editorial uh, support for, you know, because articles in the medical literature are supposed to be peer-reviewed by an editorial staff, etc. In this case, even the editor was paid by the drug companies. So this led me to ask, um, is this, should this article be called the science of fibromyalgia? Maybe it should be called the sales of fibromyalgia. Or maybe the question is, is this simply corporate rationalization advocating pharmaceuticals? I will lead you to uh, make your own decision on which of those questions is correct and what the correct answer is. So if you'd like to learn more about the actual cause of fibromyalgia, uh, one book that you might look into is this book called Migraine Headaches, Hypothyroidism, and Fibromyalgia. It was written by yours truly, published in 2012 for $25. It's 282 pages, available from Amazon.com and also Amazon's publisher, which is CreateSpace.com. Again, for more information, please look at some of my other videos and the videos that will follow this conversation uh, to provide more detail.
For doctors who want a broader perspective on this and other conditions commonly seen in clinical practice, you might look into my integrative orthopedics book. For $30 more, it provides more than twice the information. It's 610 pages for $55, so that's less than 10 cents a page. Also available from Amazon.com and, again, from Amazon's publisher, which is CreateSpace.com. Again, I will be happy to post uh, some more videos discussing um, not only orthopedics, but other conditions that are commonly seen in clinical practice. So again, this has been Dr. Alex Vasquez discussing some controversial topics in fibromyalgia. I realize we might not all come to the same conclusions, but I just thought I'd point out a few interesting facets of the fibromyalgia research and the way that doctors are kind of taught to think about uh, treating this relatively common condition that affects, affects about uh, 2 million Americans. So uh, due to time limitations, I'm going to call this part one, and some other components of this discussion we'll have to have in other videos. Thank you for your attention, and uh, look forward to seeing you here again.